ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng katotohanan? Ito yung kawalan <laughs> ng mali. <laughs> Back in 2009 or 2010, when GK and CFC were having their turmoil, mm-hmm. split up, there was an open letter. Actually, several open letters I found were flying around. And I'll read from one open letter. This was written by Jose Marie Oquinena. There's another, because um, apparently there are two Jose Oquinenas. One is the current executive director, he's Jose Luis, and one is Jose Marie, uh, and this is his open letter. He was the then, I think, internal, one of the internal operations leaders. So I'll read from, from it. it. It just struck me as a, as very gawad kalinga. So <laughs> there, is a, the brand red? <laughs> there is a saying that goes, I'm, I'm reading from the letter. For evil to triumph is when good men are bakla. Oh, sorry, when good men do nothing. You know, this is an open letter meant to be read by everyone following the situation. So all of the members of Gawad Kalinga, all of the members of CFC, back then even the CBCP, even the Vatican was was uh, following this, uh, this rift that was happening. So it just strikes me as what, what is inappropriate. <laughs> Grossly. Right? I mean, it's it's just so wrong, yeah. right? Obviously, but what's what's re- uh, if you think about it, what's really so wrong about cappuccino? <laughs> oh no, okay, delicious. nothing. Cappuccino is good. Our country will be built on <laughs> these beverages. Okay, uh, for those of you who do not know, Leloy was fortunate enough to be to witness one of the most interesting Gawad Kalinga speeches. That's uh, you know, it's very controversial. So let's hear it from, from Lelo himself. What, what really happened there? Like there are a lot of people with different accounts, but you were there. Yeah, so I, I was I there, you. I was there. So, so the first thing is that no, unfortunately there is no transcript, but that doesn't mean we can't talk about the speech. Why didn't because you make a were, transcript, Lelo? There were, <laughs> why did I, I always make a transcript. Yeah, I, know. I, I witness speeches. You. What, everything you're saying, I'm transcribing right now. <laughs> no, I, I, see, I see the pen. What's writing? He's using his foot, actually. Okay. No, no. So, Tony Melotto, the the founder of, of GK. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, if you read the transcript, uh, the transcript, <laughs> what, what transcript from the University of Hawaii CPS, that's a very accurate accounting of what happened there. And I was there, and um, you know, it didn't mention things like, for instance, there are a number of people who walked out. Mm. And Tony Melotto's recent statement today was that he was received quite well. The problem is the people who walked out were sitting at the back because these were also the same people who wanted quick access to the lechon. The lechon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, so people did walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people were did, offended. People were offended and people... Remember, you know, this is... You know, for better or for, for worse, half of your audience consisted of academics. And academics basically like to complain about language. That's what we do, right? <laughs> so you have, have to make you sure do. that your language is, is at the very least politically correct. Or if you're asking us to be potential donors, to be part- potential participants in the Filipino dream, the least you can do is actually do the research and consider the fact that these are people who are highly sensitive uh, about issues of gender, issues of race, and, and, and of course, you know, we're not going to take that lying down. Um, so, so yeah, so the, I guess the first failure in his part was that he didn't do the research. No transcripts, no, were recorded, no, no video recording. What was said? Uh, you know, what the, was said? No, no, I, I think I was talking to some friends at UH oh. and there, ma- there was a video, except, oh. uh, except they're on summer break right now in the University of Hawaii. Mm, interesting. It was taken by a student. Something to look forward to. So they're to. looking for the student who took the video. Oh, okay. Be so what was said? For the people who do not know absolutely about this Tony Meloto Gawad mm. Kalinga uh, insensitive speech. Mm. What was I guess the first? Said, the I, okay, I guess the first thing that offended the, the CPH people was that he was invited there as the guest speaker for the culminating event of the 40th anniversary of the University of Hawaii Center for Philippine Studies, mm. and he came there and he. I don't think he did this research about the organization because he didn't say anything about the organization. It like the completely perfunctory things and then proceeded to talk about himself, talk about God Kalinga, promoted his own business, you know, yeah, human, human nature. nature. Hmm. And then he started cracking jokes that were really like, you know, Bad. insensitive. So okay, jokes such as, yeah. 
so so the famous cappuccino joke, right? He said that you know people should white people should come to the Philippines so that they can breed with Filipinos and produce wonderful cappuccinos. Um, What's so wrong with What's so wrong with <laughs> Okay, so know. he was implying, of course, yes, that yeah. nine months after there would be like the cappuccino, mm. which is the, the children of the Filipino yeah. Yeah. exports yeah. with the uh, Americans who purchase these mm. Filipino products. Mm. So objectification of women, uh, yeah. sexism, uh, racism, uh, racism, elitism, actually, yeah. a lot of mm. issues, of mm. course. Is there a, a a way to to generously interpret what he said? So let's let's give him a, okay, the, 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 the most generous yeah. way I'm interpreting this is that they were jokes, right? Yeah. But we okay. all know that jokes. Well, you know, it's a cliche to say that they're half men, but also jokes are indicative of what kind of taste you have. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the statement you read today for evil to triumph is when good men are bakla. That's a joke, right? <laughs> And um, we're laugh we laughed not because it was a good joke, but just because you know someone did. it's funny Some that somebody would even dare attempt a joke like that in, in this day and age. This, this is not 1980. This yeah, is yeah. 2000. No, I know, I know. 2007, 2000. But if you yeah. listen to our radio, we're in a perpetual 1980s in the Philippines. No, so there's a lot of Manilo there, so that's maybe true. there's a lot of like, bad jokes. By the way, Manilo is gay, so you know I shouldn't be using. Manilo. <laughs> so in uh, in Tony Melotto's non-apology like there were two there was the twitter mm -hmm. the short twitter non-apology and the longer rappler non-apology ah. here's a link if you're interested in reading that he said that this is the first time someone's called him elitist sexist and so on mm -hmm. and he's been giving speeches hundreds of times in the philippines and all over the world mm -hmm. so this kind of thing you know it's it's not something that oh i, I thought of a joke yeah. i thought of a joke right now i want to tell people no He's been telling this, probably. I'm, I'm just assuming, I don't know, of mm. course, but he's been telling this yeah. joke to lots of yeah. people, and this is the first time he's been called yeah. out. It's the wrong audience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, as far as. There's a first time for everything. Yeah. But there, the thing is, like, just because it's the first time you've been called out doesn't mean that all the previous times you were right mm. to, to deliver such a joke in, in the like, venue. It's always on the. The weight is on, like, if you're trying to be a comedian, for the comedian to know the audience. And make sure that their the jokes are good for that particular audience. Okay, our group is pretty liberal, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, we're calling yeah. out someone about humor. But yeah. we are big freedom speech yeah. advocates. I remember the issue with uh, the evangelicals dressing up as Bin Laden. Oh, that one. What was that? The, 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 there was this like, CCF. 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 Dressed up as a suicide bomber. Just, just in, a suicide a party. in a party. In a party, the director, the, yeah. the main guy mm. of CCF, uh, insensitively, like you, mm. like it's one thing when you're joking among mm. friends, right? Yeah. But when when they're strangers, like you're kind of imposing your level of humor on them when yeah. you don't know their sensitivities, you don't That's know their their rapport. I, I shout out to to Carlos Aldran. Somebody wrote him actually, and he said, and, and, and it it gives me an insight as to why he's never been called out. Yeah. The the letter that Carlos got was. It was from an American, and he basically said, the Center for Philippine Studies is imposing American standards on a Filipino. Mm. And that's why many Americans don't get offended, because they know that their standard of political correctness is not the same as the mm -hmm. standard of Filipinos. So we should just understand these Filipinos. And actually, you know, props to Carlos for sharing that, but I, find, I don't know who Carlos' source was, but... I found that really patronizing because I don't think Filipinos are politically incorrect, right? I mm. don't think Filipinos are in because the implication there is that we're kind of backward, you know, we yeah. just yeah. accept this yeah. humor. Yeah. But I think if you look at the outburst against Tony Mulotto coming from Philippines, not not Filipino Americans, not yeah. Americans, people here in the Philippines, that they're just as incensed as people who grew up on the cultural politics of the US. Yeah. That yeah. we also have our notions of what sexism is and what proper humor should be, mm -hmm. you know. So so yeah, but maybe that's the reason why he hasn't been called out. Maybe people have been patronizing, you know? And maybe uh, one potential reason that he hasn't been called out is from what I've read and from what I've heard about Gawad Kalinga, he's kind of like a cultish figure oh, yeah. in this group. Like people sort of worship him already. He's uh, Actually, it was the CFC themselves. I think one of their main issues during the GK-CFC split was that too much emphasis was being put on Tony Milotto being the founder of Gawad Kalinga. And I read somewhere, I don't know, I, I followed, I read so many stuff, I even found this for Evil to Triumph. Anyway, um, I read someone saying, 
Gawad Kalinga wasn't founded by Tom, Tony Miloto. It was founded by God. Mm. It was, Gawad Kalinga is like a gift to see us. Yeah. So like the Communist gift. Party of Russia wasn't founded by, uh, or the USSR, what, the Communist Party wasn't founded by Lenin, it was founded by the masses. Right? <laughs> like so if that, if that's not uh, like a uh, signal cult. for a cult, uh, I don't know what is. They were once an integral part of Catholics, uh, Couples for Christ, yeah. right, CFC. And they were one of the main pillars, right? Everyone was talking about that. The Vatican uh, approved, uh, what do they call it? You know, they recognized mm. CFC and Gawad Kalinga. Mm. CBCP recognized them. Mm. They, when the split happened, they were even commenting on it. Mm. So they were really an integral part. Mm. But why did the split even happen? I already mentioned the, the cultish mm. attitude towards uh, Tony Miloto. There were also complaints that he, he's Tito Tony, apparently. Tito Tony. Tito Tony. I don't know Tito yeah, yeah. Tony. So, uh, in fairness, he, he, he's probably a good guy. Mm, mm, mm. He, he probably means well, but we'll yeah, get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, they were complaining about uh, GK working with Mormons. Mm, mm. They were complaining about GK accept, accepting donations from pharmaceutical companies that made condoms. Mm. Of course, the, the CFC is against contraception mm. because, uh, you know, they're, they're recognized by the Vatican. So... They, they saw that uh, the GK was veering away from the way that uh, that CFC did things, mm. so the split happened. And you know, if if you're a free thinker, if you're for secularism, you would root for for GK. Yeah, you know, yeah. in this. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would be your gut reaction, right? Yeah, yeah. that would yeah. be your your breaking, gut reaction. It's like you're breaking free yeah. from the chain of the dog. Mm. So fast forward from I think this happened 2010 or 2009 to 2015. And GK is an established uh, charitable organization. And we were recently in the GK farm. We had some friends there. And I don't understand how these guys ended up in the GK farm, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, there, there was a, there, they have some science-related stuff there. And that okay. was what we were, we were there for, you know, biohacking stuff. But anyway, we, we heard that, that the, the interns going to GK, they were told that they're not religious. Mm -hmm. They were denying being a, a religious charitable organization. Mm -hmm. But just a, just do a Google search for God and GK and you know one of the first results you'll find is the the about page, the website of GK. And several times they mention God as an integral part. You know, how do you solve the problem of poverty? Faith in God is the answer. That's the main answer. Before they get into the details, the main answer is faith in God, everyone who believes in him. So Secular? I don't think so. And, and I think if you look at the structure of GK, a lot of it was built around the CFC, right? Yeah, so yeah. how much of that was withdrawn after the divorce? And this is where, you know, I'm really challenging investigative journalists and reporters mm. to find out whether or not GK's, uh, CFC is still running a lot of these communities because I was in Tacloban and I asked people there in the GK community yeah. if we could use condoms there. And they said, no, we can't use condoms They're here. They're prohibited yeah. from using condoms. Prohibited from using condoms. But this is just one community, right? This so was a rehabilitation don't... effort there yeah. in the yeah. but, they built, but they built houses there. Um, mm. and, and, you know, that, 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 that community was receiving state funding. So there's, yeah. for example, a Binay wing in the GK community in Tacloban. Which I saw with my own two eyes. No transcript, but <laughs> no video trust, as well. To trust my eyes. I, I, uh, <laughs> this is fishy, I, I, there. I, I, why, why aren't you transcribing and I, recording I, these things? I know, I know, right? So, so how much of that? So the question is like, how much of that is official GK policy? How much of that is CFC vestiges of CFC? How much of that is CFC still being there? So mm. we don't know. But if it is still there, then you know, this is we should look into this because this might be yeah. a test case for ensuring that organization, religious organizations don't receive funding from the state. And these guys do receive funding from the state. They do receive quite that. explicit about working with local governments. Right? Okay. And um, intimately working with them. And, you know, local politicians have used GK as a kind of deodorizer, you know. Oh, I give money yeah. to GK. Yeah. I work with GK. Yeah. And so, so therefore, it's, it's good, right? Binai works yeah. with GK. Binai works That's with GK. That's a Binai row of houses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm, in Tacloban. Yeah, okay. And so, so you know, I mean, that that's not to say that this is, uh, you know, the, that this is corruption or anything like that. This is, I'm just merely stating a secularism point here. Okay. Um, so, but what I'm is not the issue? Any corruption? I'm not in yeah. any corruption whatsoever here. What is the issue, though? If people are, I'll play the devil's advocate. Okay. If people are 
getting houses, mm -hmm. you know, making good livelihoods, um, getting out of poverty mm -hmm. as the GK mission mm -hmm. says. So what if they, they, they're indoctrinated? It's, all, it's already very loaded. <laughs> no? but, but so, so what if what? They're, they're hearing about the, the, you know, have more faith in God message? Mm. Like, what's the problem there? Well, you know, I, I'm not entirely sold on the fact that this model works, right? Mm. Because nobody's ever done uh, an assessment of GK, an external assessment of GK that looks at the facts, like how many people graduated from GK houses? Yeah. Um, how many people are actually uplifted from poverty? How many people got jobs? So, uh, how many people got their skills upgraded? Um, and is it really good that they're working for, you know, G, you know, their GK communities and they're, you know, packaging Bayanibu or whatever? What's, what's the sustainability of these things? Um, I think GK has the data. Um, and mm. what they should do is actually release this data to academics who are not So it's currently not. Is, is there um, a paywall? Is that a JSTOR? I don't know if it's a paywall or, or what, but I know, they have the, I, know, I know they have the data, but they're not releasing it to, to academics. So it's kind of proprietary, but you know, they're not obligated to do so mm. because in a way they're a private organization. Certainly. That's kind but of weird. But if they're registered as a charitable organization, yeah, they charitable. have some yeah. obligation mm. to mm. release. Yeah. So that's the thing. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, what they're registered as. Because if they were registered as a charitable organization, they would they, they would get land uh, property tax uh, discounts. Uh, they wouldn't be charged certain taxes. And um, what they're doing, you know, uh, becoming uh, a religious charitable organization, that's that's not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. My beef with the with their indoctrination practices with yeah. the GK is that one of the problems here is that they're their charity, so to speak, is very discriminatory. Like, if somebody, someone that they were trying to help already had a different religion mm -hmm. with different practices, yeah, and they would enforce these practices on these people, mm -hmm. if, what, what would happen if they refuse? Are they going to be refused help altogether? And in if that they're sense, Mormons. Yeah, for, Mormons were particularly mentioned in the complaint <laughs> against GK. Yeah, so like, it's, it's a charity, but it's still very selective. Like I would much rather have a secular charity, um, if especially if, because if government funding, like you said, is going into these organizations. Yeah. If 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 public money is mixing in with these, I would need them to be secular. So something it's, like a Habitat for Humanity, for example, yes, which I think you know funded by Protestants initially, mm -hmm. and I think it's a Protestant movement. But the way it works is that you. Habitat for, for Humanity is basically they give you a box yeah. and then you do what you want with it. You can build communities around it. So, so GK's model is different from that in the sense that they have people encouraging them to commit to social enterprise yeah. and there are workshops. So it's basically, you know, it's a hands-on, you know, my, my euphemistic way of phrasing it is that it's a hands-on way of empowering the poor. Hmm. So, so I think, you know, it raises questions about, like, how do you think about the poor? Or, you know, how, how pastoral do you want, I might throw this, this question at you guys, yeah. how pastoral do you want to be relative to the poor? When we were there, we didn't really hear any preaching, mm -hmm. right? Like, none of the GK people were praying, you know, like they were in a circle holding hands, you know, heads bowed. None of that happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not that kind of religious organization at least. When you ask them whether they're a religious organization, they say no. Right? So it's very subtle. It's on the it's on their website. Right? They're led by all of these uh, highly religious conservative people. It's on their uh, statement, on their is it a mission statement? Um, charter, mm. which was posted on their on a prominently on their wall, you know, mentions of God and and so on. Mm. So it's very subtle. It's not so overt, but does that then make it okay? Because some of the policies, like you know, like what you said about n no contraception, I think that's a that's a violation of human rights. Yeah, if it ever is yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, but and we that, don't know if it's institutional or if it was just, just something a, that happened in Tacloban. I find it even more troubling that they're trying to hide these things because, like, the bigger an organization is, the more transparency I think they should um, show. Mm. So, like, GK is pretty huge, yeah, and so they really should be more transparent with these practices and be clear about, like, are you religious or not, okay. and show it in your in how you do things. This is a formula, mm. uh, a big organization with so much power and very little transparency. This is what happened with the church. And what happened was <laughs> um, child abuse issue mm -hmm. happened because there wasn't enough accountability, enough transparency, and people were afraid of challenging the priests and the bishops who they all looked up to. 
And Tony Melotto, for the first time in his life, is being called out. So, so, so that's might actually save the organization. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I wouldn't go that far, okay. but it's a start. Mm-hmm. I mean, even because Kawad Kalia has a good name, mm-hmm. they, they do good work. Yeah, yeah right? you know, Tony Melotto was call, called the most trusted person in the Philippines. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how he was introduced to us, actually, in Hawaii. The most trusted person in the Philippines. Wow. Among Magsay Sai Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, so they just have some blind spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of really good people who mean well who are already in Gawad Kalinga. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm sure some of them share some of the ideals that we're spouting here. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see a reform, a reformist, so to speak, mm-hmm. movement within Gawad Kalinga, at least efforts from the members themselves mm-hmm. to help, you know, shape the organization mm-hmm. into something better. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Mm-hmm. And thank you very much to Manila Review. <laughs> Uh, for for this episode, actually, the only reason you're interested in the, yeah, the Tony Melotto issue is because I want to promote my publication. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a very roundabout way for you to promote your publication. I know, I know, but that ganon uh, kakapal ang mukha ko. Okay, uh, we will talk about this at the next meetup. Uh, details on that are on our Facebook page, uh, website. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. And from Pepe, Leloy, and me, and the analyst desk. See you next time.